Greetings, beloved. Good evening on this fourth Sunday of Lent. What a day. I, um, I can say I was greatly overwhelmed and, and humbled as you continue to unite with me to, and not only with me, with so many others in our community near and far, as we go through this trial, this testing in our world. And I wanted to afford the opportunity to anyone to pray, to close this day with night prayer, traditional prayer from the Liturgy of Yahweh's every priest, deacon, um, the, uh, consecrated, the consecrated souls, religious throughout the world, they all participate and do this as a duty. It's a prayer for the church, for the believer and the non-believer alike, for the whole world. Many of our lay people also embrace this practice, say maybe in third order of the Carmelites, or St. Francis de Sales, so many there are uh, third order of uh, the Dominicans, so we, um, we're we grateful. We're grateful for the gift of prayer in this special time of the season of Lent. And so I want to invite us to begin in prayer, just calling to mind the reality that we are in the, in the presence of Almighty God. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Beloved, let us prepare ourselves for night prayer by a brief examination of conscience, a calling to mind of our sins as we seek the Lord's forgiveness and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Night holds no terrors for me, sleeping under God's wing. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God, in whom I trust. It is he who will free you from the snare of the fowler who seeks to destroy you. He will conceal you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the plague that prowls in the darkness, nor the scourge that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand fall at your right. You, it will never approach. His faithfulness is buckler and shield. Your eyes have only to look to see how the wicked are repaid. You who have said, Lord, my refuge, and have made the Most High your dwelling. Upon you no evil shall fall, 
nor plague approach where you dwell. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against the stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread and trample the young lion and the dragon. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him, protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I shall answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. With length of life, I will content him. I shall let him see my saving power. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Night holds no terrors for me, sleeping on the God's wing. A reading from the book of Revelation. They shall see him face to face and bear his name on their foreheads. The night shall be no more. They will need no light from lamps or the sun, for the Lord God shall give them light and they shall reign forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsory. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed us, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep, that awake we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Protect us, Lord, as we stay awake. Watch over us as we sleep. That awake, we may keep watch with Christ, and asleep, rest in his peace. Let us pray. Lord, we have celebrated today the mystery of the rising of Christ to new life. May we now rest in your peace, safe from all that could harm us, and rise again, refreshed and joyful, to praise you throughout another day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Beloved, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of peace, who perfects you in holiness of life, continue to preserve you whole and entire, spirit, soul, and body, irreproachable,
at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. May the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful sleep. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Et Spes Nostra Salve. A te clamamos, exules filii eve, a te suspiramos, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, Ilos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Iesum, benedictum, fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, o, 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 o pia, o, 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 o dulcis, Loving Mother of the Redeemer, Gate of Heaven and Star of the Sea, assist thy people who have fallen, yet strive to rise again. To the wonderment of nature, you bore your Creator, yet remained a virgin after as before. You, who received Gabriel's joyful greeting, have pity on us. For sins. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this night be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved, I wanted to take a, a little bit of time with you tonight. I, I, I am just to let you know, I'm a bit of a night owl. So if some of you uh, be, have become night owls in this present situation, then welcome. Welcome to my, my world. It's a wonderful thing, actually, to pray late at night. I, I can understand why in the gospel it often said that Jesus would pray late into the night or in the wee hours of the morning. Um, I, was, I was struck by a word today in the daytime prayer, the midday prayer. The reading was taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. It spoke so powerfully to my heart and I want to share this, this word with you. It's the 30th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
It's a word that I believe, uh, the 30th chapter, verse 15 and 18. It's a word that I believe we should meditate upon every day, every night. I mean, when you hear this word, I mean, it just speaks, it speaks to our hearts and it speaks to the situation, not just this one, but any situation in, in this life as we know it. And so I want to share this word with you from the book of the prophet Isaiah, again, chapter 30, verse 15 and 18. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, by waiting and by calm, you shall be saved. In quiet and in trust shall be your strength. But this, truly, the Lord is waiting to be gracious to you. Truly, he shall rise to show you mercy. For the Lord is a God of justice. Happy are all who wait for him. I want to repeat that word again. It's, it's so powerful. It's somewhat like a, the Lexio Divina where you, you say the word, you read it the first time through for understanding, just basic understanding. The second time you read the word more deliberately, a little bit more attentively, and paying attention to what jumps out, what, what word, what phrase, what thought maybe that arises in your heart. And then you would take a little more time in, in quiet pondering, and then you read it, a third time, and then you simply remain in the silence of that word, letting that word rest on you, and then you're asking the Lord, Lord, are you saying to the Lord, speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening. So let me just repeat this word again for us. Again, this is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15 through 18. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, by waiting and by calm, you shall be saved. In quiet and in trust shall be your strength. Truly, the Lord is waiting to be gracious to you. Truly, he shall rise to show you mercy. For the Lord is a God of justice. Happy are all who wait for him. Amen. What a word. And I'm telling you, it's to me, it's a word that we can write that down, commit that to memory, and remind ourselves of it, especially when there seems to be no end in sight. And, and that's, that's what I think is really eating at us. When you think about journeys you've taken, like if I'm going on a road trip with friends or family to, to Disney World, now, as an adult, as young adults, and even as teenagers, we, we recognize uh, that's going to take some time, but we know that the, the destination is ahead. We, we know it's going to be there. It's, it's just a matter of time. Whereas a little child, the, the young ones among us, they are what? What are they saying all the time? They're, oh, are, we, are we there yet? Oh, we think you might be, we might be on the road maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And the question is, come, is brought out, oh, are we there yet? Are we there yet? We are here now. We are here together right now. And not only are we here together, but Jesus is in our midst. Beloved, you need to understand this as well. I mean, we, we hear it in the scriptures. We, it's almost like a cliche. Where two or more are gathered in his name, or in my name, saith the Lord, I am present in their midst. This is true. And even if you don't have another person with you, if you're connecting with me right now or with a brother or sister, and just this core scene and, and maybe entering into a prayer, asking one another for prayers for different circumstances, guess what? You're connecting. There's more than one person with you, and the Lord is there. And even if you're by it, we're never alone. Our guardian angel is there with us. Our 
patron saint, uh, the, the, the saint that we may have been baptized by. Oh, by the way, I failed to mention on Saturday, Saturday, March the 21st, marked the 49th anniversary of my baptism. I was baptized under the name of St. Vincent de Paul. And for those of you who have dedication to the poor and work in the ministry of St. Vincent de Paul, I know our St. Vincent de Paul community here, the, the, the ministry here at Our Lady Perpetual and Bell Chase is second to none in my opinion. No offense to any others out there. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. But I know that every community has its fair share of opportunities outreaching. We do. We have that disposition, that regard for the poor. And, and that's proper. That is, that's what's necessary. Because in reaching out to the poor, we are definitely recognize, realizing that which is of, of God's own heart. In the first reading from the Mass today, we remember King David was selected in, this, in the first book of Samuel. And the scripture says that David was a man after God's own heart. What did God see in the heart of David that made him so attractive? I was listening to the reflection of Bishop Robert Barron, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles in California. And he highlighted three things, and I hope I can do some justice to what he shared. The first thing he said that God saw in the heart of David that attracted him to David was that virtue which is the mother of all virtues. In fact, it's St. Augustine, I believe, and St. Gregory the Great who say that there are three things which constitute the heart of all this. This is three things that constitute the heart of all virtues. Humility, humility, and humility. David was humble. That's the first thing God saw in his heart. The second thing was that at his worst, David was a fighter. And at his best, when he listened to God, he was a, a better fighter, a greater fighter, a great fighter for the Lord. And who of us could ever forget the sin of David when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had relations with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And upon this, and in the wake of this sin, Nathan comes and he tells David a parable, King David a parable about this man who had so much, so much abundance of livestock and so forth, lambs and goats and what have you. And he had a friend that guy came to visit with him. And instead of taking something from his own livestock, there was his neighbor right next door who was poor, a simple guy, just living in meager means. And he had one hue lamb. One hue lamb. And this man went and took that man's only lamb. He, he killed it and prepared that as the meal for him and his friend. Nathan presented this to King David and he says, King David, David, what do you think should happen? What, what do you think should be uh, the consequence of, of such, a, such a crime? He said, that man should be put to death. To which Nathan the prophet said, you are the man. You are the man. In David, humble of heart, listened to that word of God spoken through the prophet Nathan, that firm, 
in your gentle conviction. And he listened. And with listening, and after listening, he penned probably one of the most beautiful of all the psalms. It's a penitential psalm that we always say in the Liturgy of the Hours in the morning prayer on Fridays. It's Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness, in your compassion. Blot out my offense. A tremendous, tremendous prayer. In fact, some, some Catholics, some Christians, when they go to confession, uh, I know um, Gloria Purvis. I don't know if y'all know Gloria Purvis on, on, on Catholic radio. When I'm watching on EWTN radio, it comes on Morning Glory. And it's Gloria Purvis, usually more times than not, Monsignor um, uh, Charles Pope and Deacon Harold Burke Sever Severs, or Severs. And they're delightful. And sometimes they have another priest, and um, his name is escaping me, but they have different ones. But usually, more times than not, it's Monsignor Charles Pope, who is a priest of the uh, Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. And it's just delightful. And, and, but Gloria Purvis was sharing that she, when she goes to confession, she'll ask the priest, do you mind if I uh, pray or recite Psalm 51 as my act of contrition? And she says the priests are so patient and they allow her to say that whole psalm. And I think that's just, that's, that's amazing. I, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, it's, it's a beautiful word. It's a tremendous expression. If you've never read or haven't read the Psalms lately, Psalm 51 is, is surely, it, it's, it's got to be one of the best. One of the best. Before closing uh, with you this evening, I want to uh, share with you, I received, while I was checking my email, I get correspondences from the National Catholic Register which is uh, the newspaper, a beautiful Catholic newspaper that is produced by the Eternal Word Television Network, EWTN, the community. And it has some of the wonderful stories. But in this uh, article, it speaks, uh, it shares Pope Francis. Pope Francis has called on all Christian leaders and every Christian community around the world to recite the Our Father at noon on Wednesday of this week, which is the Feast of the Annunciation, as, quote, humanity trembles at the threat, close quote, of the coronavirus pandemic, quote, in these days of trial, close quote. Addressing the faithful through the media from the Apostolic Palace after reciting the Angelus today, the Pope said that as the prayer will take place, quote, on the day when many Christians remember the Annunciation to the Virgin Mary of the Incarnation of the Word, may the Lord, may the Lord hear the unanimous prayer of all his disciples. And I'll add, he doesn't say this, but I'll say it, not only his disciples, all of his children, since the Holy Father is asking for the prayer of the Our Father that he will hear the prayer, the unanimous prayer of all his disciples preparing to celebrate the victory of the risen Christ. Pope Francis will also preside over, moment, over a moment of prayer at the Sagrato in front of St. Peter's Basilica at 6 o'clock p.m. on Friday, March the 27th, where, quote, we will listen to the word of God. We will raise our supplication. We will adore the blessed sacrament. We will adore the blessed sacrament. And maybe that's something I can figure out how to incorporate and we can do this together. So let's just take that to prayer and see if the Lord provides me with the opportunity. And the technology, as you know, we've been challenged with that. But I'll speak to that uh, before closing tonight because I want to and give you some news with regard to the technology and the present the productions the quality of the productions i know it's been hit and miss but let me continue here the pope said that at the end he will give his urbi et orbi blessing which is to the city and to the world quote to which will be attached the possibility 
of receiving a plenary indulgence. The Holy Father, who usually only gives the Urbi et Orbi blessing at Christmas and Easter, said the prayer and blessing will be televised as the square as the square will be empty owing to the current lockdown. As you know, Italy, of all of the nations, is in an, an, an incredible, an incredible state right now. Quote, he says, we want to respond to the pandemic of the virus with a universality of prayer, of compassion, of tenderness, the Pope said. Quote, let us remain united. Let us make our closeness felt to the loneliest and those most tried, close quote, he added, to, quote, doctors, health workers, nurses, volunteers, our closeness to the authorities who must take hard measures, but for our own good. Our closeness to the policemen, to the soldiers on the street who always try to keep order so that the things that the government asks us to do for the good of all of us are done. Closeness to everyone. The Pope closed by inviting the faithful to read chapter 9 of the Gospel of St. John. The Gospel reading today was from John chapter 9, verse 1 through 41. He says, calmly and slowly, read this Gospel passage. I will do it as well, he said. It will do all of us good. What a papa. What a vicar of Christ we have today, successor to Peter, the first Pope that was selected. I'm going to leave my commentaries there. I want to now speak about these, the technology and the difficulties we've been having. As I say, we are diligently working, we're hoping, we're hoping to have a Wi-Fi uh, installed that will give us a strong signal that will bring all of the presentations that we have in the, in the chapel, the Divine Mercy Chapel, to a, a, a beautiful, clear quality that is rich that you all deserve and that the Lord deserves. He, he deserves our best and I intend to give him that. And I want to say that in the meantime, know this. I have also posted all of the, uh, both masses from yesterday, the vigil, and today. The whole mass, the audio, is, is captured. It's on our, uh, you can go on to the home site of the Paris Our Lady of Perpetual Help uh, website. Or you can download the app for your smartphone, My Parish. My church, uh, my parish app, and you can select OLPH and Beast uh, in, in Bell Chase, and you can have access to our all of the things that are going on. Our bulletin, which is electronically produced as well as physically, uh, tangibly produced in a in a print form, and on that site you have access to various prayers. Um, the uh, the homilies are there, uh, and you can also have. Um, online giving, all of these things. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing app. And I, I'm sure, I think a lot of the parishes in the Archdiocese throughout our nation, throughout the world, have adopted these apps. So it's, it's quite, it's, a, it's a, a tremendous resource, particularly the confession. There's also a confession um, uh, uh, characteristic in there, that aspect, that helps people make their, their good examinations of conscience. And they, they tell me how, how much they love it. Sometimes they'll come to confession and say, Father, do you mind? I said, I don't mind at all. Go right ahead. So uh, that those homilies, the homilies. So what I did was I recorded the entire, I posted the entire mass because the quality, but not just because some people don't care for the social media platforms. And so they just want to be able to go. And some actually, I have some, I have some friends have told me they're fasting from social media. 
fasting from social media. So he said, Father, I need you. Can you please post some things on the on the on the pod beam that you all use on on your podcast so that we can uh, you know I can hear. I want to you know do the chaplet of divine mercy, the rosary, and so forth. So I'm going to begin to do those things uh, in, in, at, at that person's request and at the pre- the request of many others. Maybe some others are in that same boat. Or maybe we just want to listen, engage our listening our faculties more than any other, and just let that message, let the whole mass, the presentation, uh, sink into our hearts. Also, uh, so in, in addition to the entirety of the mass, the vigil mass yesterday, the mass of today, Sunday, this first day of the week, I also had a shorter thing where it was just the first reading, the responsorial psalm, the second reading, the gospel, and the homily. And so you have choices, there are options for you and for me. Thank you for for being here this evening with me. I know this is a difficult time. And that's probably the understatement of a century. I, I don't think, I know, I can only speak for myself. I will never, ever, as long as I live, forget the Lent of 2020. Never in my life, this, I, 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 I thought, uh, uh, I thought, and for those of us in Southeast Louisiana, I thought Katrina was something. But this, this, this is unprecedented in our times, in our modern times. Not unprecedented in the history of the world, mind you, but in our times. It's... It's something that will bring us all to our knees. And it humbles us. It reminds us that without God, we're nothing. How good he is to us. How merciful and patient he is with us. When you think about the things that are going on in this world, It's just out of control. It's out of control. And when you and I find ourselves frustrated, getting stir crazy, being so close to family and friends, because I understand, I believe you, I understand. I understand. We need to remember. We need to remember how much God has loved us and into what length he went to confirm that love for us in the person of Jesus the Christ. Unfathomable. Absolutely unfathomable, the love of God for all of us. And we must understand this. We must learn how to accept such a love. No strings attached. Purely his love is purely for you and me as other. And he yearns for us to give that back to him. To give that back to him. Let us not lose, let's not let this opportunity to show our love for Jesus in this time of suffering. So many of us, we try to get away from suffering. We want to do anything and everything. But I hear my grandmother's voice, off it up, honey. Off it up. Off it up to the Lord. For the holy souls in purgatory, there's always somebody worse off. Always somebody worse off. It's amazing how these words of wisdom come back to us. And I hope you are spending time thinking on, reflecting on how much you've been given. How much, how many people our lives have been enriched by over the course of the years. We must remember them as they remember us. They are not, (laughs) believe me, They are not oblivious to what we're going through. 
They're cheering us on. They are praying with us. They are praying with the mother of Jesus, the ever-virgin blessed Mary, our perpetual help. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, Our Lady of Lords, Our Lady of Guadalupe. She's Our Lady of everything. She's the Queen of Heaven and Earth. As the Queen Mother, her son is the King of the universe, Jesus the Christ. And he always defers to his mother. We cannot go wrong. We cannot go wrong turning to our mother whose heart is immaculate, whose heart is aflame with love for you and for me. And she's not looking at us with judgment. She really isn't. J Jesus doesn't look at us with judgment. It's a long, it's a look of, it's a gaze of longing. It's a gaze of longing. You know, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary, I, I, I think of her as, as, as a mother, as a woman who, 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 is, who is always scouting, scouting, always being vigilant, always surveying the household, the family, all of us, her children. She's looking at us and she's looking to see whom she might tap to, to present the message, the message of the gospel, <laughs> the message of faith, hope, and love. I'll see you tomorrow morning. The, the good Lord says the same. 9 o'clock a.m. We'll live stream. Pray God the, the technology holds up and I might just for the sake of it, because uh, you know, I can I can do it. I'm just going to make the sacrifice. I'll also upload it. I'll, I'll record it on the sound system for the church in case the audio goes out and there's something you wanted to hear. But just to have, uh, I just I think it's good and it's worth the sacrifice. I'm learning a lot. I'm not as I mentioned so many friend requests, and I wanted to say this to one and all. It's not that I'm I'm not desiring to be your friend. I. <laughs> Uh, it, it's just, it's overwhelming, the request. And if I was to, you know, when I choose a, a person as a friend, I, I'm, I'm, I, I expect myself to, to be ready at hand to, to respond to your needs in, in a timely fashion. And I just couldn't do justice. I, can't, I couldn't do justice. And again, I, 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 had to, I had to reactivate my social media, my uh, Facebook account, in order to become an administrator of this Facebook account for the parish, and I had to get that authorization through Dawn, Dawn Bassett, our, our parish secretary, and, and so it's it's been a learning experience, but it's been rich and rewarding, and I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this medium. I, I'm thankful for the ability to have creativity and imagination. As I was sharing with you all at the beginning of Mass, I, I imagine where you're sitting, and I can say this about all of my parishes. No priest ever forgets where his parishioners are in the pews. I'm terrible with names, but I never forget faces. My first assignment is St. Edward the Confessor. My second assignment, Our Lady of Lords in Lord St. Bernard and Violet. And then after Katrina, Our Lady of Lords in Slidell, most the uh, Sacred Heart of Jesus in Lacombe. And now here at Our Lady of Perpetual Help. I can visualize, I know where each and every one of you sits in your place. I truly do. And that is what sustains me. That's what gives me the passion. Because you might say, how is this guy doing this? I mean, he can't see, nobody's there with him. I, I'm preaching, I'll tell you what, I sometimes, I, I'll preach like a man gone crazy out of my mind. It could only be one person in the assembly, and I'll pray as if the whole world was present to me. And I can't take credit for that. That's been gifted to me by the Lord Jesus, who says, who among you, if he has a hundred sheep, and one of those sheep goes astray and gets lost, would not leave the 99 sheep 
in search of that one. How can you and I resist such a shepherd? That is absolutely ludicrous. And yet that confirms how madly in love God is with us. Let us discover that love anew. Let that sustain us. I mean, if we've never ever prayed before, and you know, prayer is so it's so multi it's so multifaceted. It's there's no right or wrong way. It's just being there. Just be with me. Be with me. Jesus says, "Come." You remember, Peter, James, and John, come watch, stay watching, and pray with me in His time of need in the Garden of Gethsemane. And each time he came back, he found them asleep. They were overwhelmed with grief. They were disturbed at seeing Jesus in such a distraught disposition. As he, as he witnessed, as he saw all of the sins of the world, of every single person from the beginning to the end of time. And yet he still said to his father, after saying, after, mind you, after expressing, Father, all things are possible to you. If it be, let this chalice pass me by, but not my will, but your will be done. And we're told in the gospel that an angel was sent to him in his time of need. Angels have been assigned to you and I since the time we were conceived in our mother's wombs. Before he formed us in the womb, Jeremiah the prophet says, I knew you. Before I formed you, I consecrated you. And this is everything. It's everything. Oh my goodness. I, I hate I hate to sign off. I'll tell you the truth. Anybody who knows me, you know me. <laughs> you know how I can go. I, I, I just when I when I'm speaking about the things of the Lord, so much comes up in my heart. I could speak them from the from the to the sunrise. I, I'll tell you the truth. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Believe you me. I could speak on Jesus, on the gospel, on faith, on hope and love, as I've experienced it, as I've been enriched by so many people, directly, indirectly. It's amazing. Incredible. And what I say of myself is true for you too. You simply have to stop and reflect. This is a time to be still. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And so I, I have to sign off. I know we, I, it, it kills me. Believe me, it does. But I see you. I see you in my heart. I see you in my heart, and I feel I am experiencing the the power, your sincerity, your heartfelt prayers, every comment. I read them. I'm not always. Uh, we, I'm responding. I'm trying to reply to as many as possible. It's overwhelming, overwhelming. But I'm trying. Bear with me, please. Bear with me, and continue to love me as I. Strive to love you in the truest sense of that word. I'm not talking about emotions. I'm not talking about feelings. I'm not talking about liking you. As I've said on, on many occasions, I love a lot of people I don't like. And I'm not easy to deal with. I know myself. I know myself. Every community I've ever been associated with, those I've worked with in ministry, you know I'm something to deal with. I'm not easy. 
I, hard, I have a difficulty dealing with myself. Hmm. Oftentimes I always hear my mouth, Boy, Kyle, you're something else. You're something else, boy. I don't know what to say about you. You're something else. I am something else. <laughs> and you are too. In fact, that something else is something more. Something more than we could ever hope or imagine. Remember in the words of St. Paul, the prophet, uh, St. Paul, the apostle. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We, beloved, can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Let us not shy away from the cross. Let us not shy away from the cross. You see who is above me. Blessed Francis Xavier Silos. The beautiful tapestry which I purchased from the National Shrine. Maybe some of you have it. And there he is. And the beautiful thing about this tapestry and it, it, it dawned on me as I, as I was looking at it, I was gazing at it, it dawned on me, this is a depiction of New Orleans. You can see the steamboat. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the Riverboat Queen. I have to, ref, I have to defer to uh, the Miss Calliope, Miss Calliope, our uh, beautiful music director who is suffering so much, as I know all the heavenly choruses is suffering so much at this time, not being able to, to be together, to sing God's praises. But Miss Calliope, Debbie Fagnano, she, she plays the Calliope on the Natchez, the riverboat Natchez. But as I see it depicted, I think it's the, I think this is the riverboat, the queen. You can, you can, if Debbie, if you're, if you're on tonight, if you get this, if somebody would just pass on to Debbie, ask her. Um, the one, it's the, it's the steamboat that has the four stacks. The, the four stacks. And I don't believe that the Natchez has four stacks. And you have, he's holding in his hand the map of the entire North American continent. Canada, the United States, Mexico. All are there. The whole of the, the North American continent. And you see depicted the children. There's some people there. And it, it, everything that Blessed Francis Xavier Silos gave himself to. The cheerful ascetic. The cheerful ascetic. What an advocate we have in him. And he's near and dear to me. He's near and dear to me. I believe he has adopted me. And I'm so grateful for him. And so I'm, I'm, I'm calling upon him. I'm calling upon him for myself and for each and every one of us here. Thank you again for your wonderful patience tonight with me. And if I wasn't taking antibiotics right now, believe me, I would raise my glass to you. I would raise my glass, my favorite spirit, which I know, those of you who, who know me, is Crown Royal. I would raise my glass to you and make a toast. And thank God that I'm able to enjoy such a libation in such a difficult time. And so I come close now because I have to I have to finish. I have to finish so that we can start anew again tomorrow with the help of God. God love and bless each and every one of you. May he safeguard us, give us strength and protection. Now and forever. Now and forever. God love you.